Alright guys, welcome to a uh, card of the day video. Today we're going to be talking about one certain card that you should play in almost every budget deck and almost every meta deck. I'll give you guys reasons why you guys should play it, because uh, it's such a good card. And it's going to be this card. A lot of people are going to be saying, oh no, don't play this. A lot of people are going to be like, oh, don't play this. But I say it's a really good card. So let's show you guys. Creature Swap. So what Creature Swap does, its effect is, well, each player uh, selects one monster they control and switches control to those monsters with each other. Those monsters cannot change their battle positions the rest of this turn. So what does that mean? So this is not a quick play. It is not. It's just a normal spell card. So if your opponent has another monster on their side of the field and you have one monster on your side of the field, one and one, you guys can both, that's the only option to choose. And um, and then you guys switch control of those players. Now the cool thing about this is a lot of people underestimate this card because this card um, doesn't like, what's the word, it doesn't target. And... It's basically affecting more of the player than the monster because you're changing their battle positions. You're just switching. Uh, a lot of people think because you're just switching their battle positions that's the monster, but no, because you're switching field sides. So that's basically a player. So this is your side. That's your opponent's side. You're basically switching. All right. So we're gonna be going over some spell cards, and the first spell card we're actually gonna be talking about is uh, mind control. So when mind control does. Um, you target one monster your opponent controls until the end phase, take control of that target, but they cannot declare an attack, um, this, or be tributed. So, that's where Creature Swap is actually better, because Creature Swap, what it does, it's not, you cannot switch them until the end phase. You can keep them forever, unless it's destroyed or something, and Creature Swap doesn't say, say target. Mind Control says target. There's a lot of other, um cards that they're like oh they're unaffected and stuff you cannot target them and this one says target and this is one of those cards that cannot get over it another cool thing about creature swap compared to mind control mind control, mind control you can only run one but creature swap you can run three so that's the good thing about that and um like i said creature swap is still a good spell card yeah it's not quick play neither is mind control but hey you would still run it and they're really good cards like, there's another spell card that's actually called Brain Control. It actually just hopped off the ban list a couple of months ago. But this one is you pay 800 life points and then target. Another word is target. One phase of monster your opponent controls. Take control of that target until the end phase. So it's almost like a mind control. You have to actually pay life points for this one. And it's only until the end phase. Like I said, creature swap. You can keep it uh, until your monster is destroyed or something. Like on your on your field. And, um, and you don't have to pay life points. Alright, well now we're going to be talking about comparing the this spell card against monsters. So, the number one monsters that I can actually, like, give you a boost would probably be Jinzo. Jinzo, trap cards and their effects on the field cannot be activated and uh, negate the trap cards already on the field. So, because Creature Swap is a spell card, it's a it's Jinzo can get affected by that, but only if your opponent controls one monster, because that's only going to give them one choice to pick one monster, and one choice of yours, or any choice of yours, to be honest. And uh, if your opponent has, like, if he's used, if he's playing Paleos, and I don't know why he would be running a Jinzo, but you never know people's about people's deck profiles and stuff, but anyways, if you lock down the Jinzo to their field, you basically lock them, and Jinzo's a really good card at the same time. Now, the one monster that Creature Swap, I believe, is going to have a really rough time with is actually Masterpiece. The reason why it's going to be with Masterpiece is because if your opponent uses a spell card, then the Creature Swap actually won't even work on Masterpiece. I asked, I went to go ask a judge and stuff, and supposedly they said, like, not even Stormforth would work on Masterpiece, which is dumb. But it's not targeting, but it's just he would be unaffected by other spell cards. So Masterpiece uh, would be unaffected by this, so you cannot Creature Swap it. There's other monsters that you cannot Creature Swap that I'll be getting into also. Uh, but, like I'm saying, like, uh, there's some that you can, and there's some that you can't. They would just say specifically, like, this guy, uh, Masterpiece, if you would tribute this color with a spell or a trap or a monster you control, it would be unaffected by those. So if you was to use a spell card, then there goes your Creature Swap. But you can use a a creature swap on something else or you can use a creature swap if they didn't use a spell card like their diagram or something 
Alright, and now the other monsters that cannot be unaffected, like they're unaffected by spells and traps, would probably be the uh, Ancient Gear Fusions. They're really hard to get around. But, um, like, it would be unaffected by uh, spells and traps, so Creature Swap wouldn't work, you know, Regeki wouldn't work, you know, other things wouldn't work. But there's a lot of, uh, of their spell cards that they can get around, like, um, their Ancient Gear Golem, like, um... You can get around that, so you can uh, creature swap their ancient gear golem, and then you just attack them with ancient gear golem. It is it is really amazing. Trust me, guys. Um, you just don't believe how much it is. But um, sometimes, like if they're unaffected by spells and traps, and they have like a monster that cannot like be destroyed by battle or be destroyed by card effect or uh, can do something really really big, you want to creature swap that. And if it's unaffected like spells and traps, then there's no way you can do that. Like almost like how I just said about the masterpiece a couple uh, minutes ago. But um, <sighs> creature swap is like a really really good card, just not against some archetypes like I'm saying ancient gear specifically because they're mostly unaffected and there's a lot of other decks that are just unaffected by almost everything. So yeah. Alright, and now we're just going to be just comparing them to some trap cards that you can get around with. And, um, I have actually no idea, but most of the time it's going to be like Paleos. I know Paleos are just trap cards, it's a trap deck, and they go off based around their traps. And, um, so what they do is, um, you, they summon the Paleo, then let's say they end their turn and they're breaking, you can, and they have no back row, which is almost going to be impossible in my opinion. Uh, it's good. You're gonna get really really lucky if they're not able to break their board on their first turn But like I'm saying uh, you can just if you want to just OTK them You can just be like hey creature swap and then you target one of their monsters because it's basically um, It's basically still a monster. It's not considered a trap card anymore So yeah, you can just clear the field and just get over it and yeah I think that's about the only traps they can get around Alright guys, well I, like I said uh, creature swap is a really really good card I would recommend playing at least three of these guys um, it's it's a really good card. Pros about it, uh, the pros about it, it's non-targeting, it's, uh, non-targeting, you're just switching control, you can keep it until, um, not until the end phase, you can actually keep it forever, and, um, you can tribute your monster, you can use your opponent's monster, um, and cons about this, it's, um, cons about this is not quick play, your opponent can, uh, they, um, I would say they can Ghost Ogre if they wanted to, or, or they can Ash Blossom, I don't know, Ghost Ogre wouldn't get around this, maybe Ash Blossom. Um, this, uh, you have to have one monster in your field and one monster in your opponent's field for it to activate. Um, what else is a con about this card? Oh, it's not quick play, and why would it be quick play if you could just do it in your turn, right? And you cannot just, you cannot change your uh, battle positions, so yeah, but... It's like I'm saying, it's a really good card. You can play at three, you can play at two, you can play at one. You don't have to play it. It's it's just an opinion. It's just my personal opinion on this card. And yeah. So, alright guys, thank you for watching. My name was Adrian from Yugi Rogue. And I'll see you guys later, okay? Alright. Comment, like, and subscribe. And share if you look for more content. And have fun doing it, guys.